Hello and welcome back to a video series on doing multiple regression. In this video I'll show you how to make a prediction and estimate a prediction interval using Microsoft Excel 2007. So we are using the same data as before, some pulse rate data. Uh, in the first video I showed you how to make a scatter plot matrix and we saw that there was some kind of relationship between incline and pulse and speed and pulse but no relationship between incline and speed as desired. Uh, we in the second video ran this multiple regression and got this output and we saw that indeed both x variables are statistically important for understanding the response pulse rate so they're helping they're both helping out and in this video I want to show you some predictions. So I'm going to use Excel to make the prediction, the point prediction, and estimate a prediction interval. I'm going to insert another column right here. And then let's go down a few cells. And uh, let's say this is incline. And this is speed. And I want to do a point prediction right here. And uh, let's do that first. So let's uh, do a hypothetical here. Let's say I want an incline of 4. I want to predict my pulse rate at an incline of 4 and a speed of 4.2. Let's uh, format these to one decimal place. Okay. And now, actually, I did have a data point in the pat in when I collected this data where I had an incline of 4 and a speed of 4.2. Actually, I had repeated observation of that, but varying pulse rates. So we'll see what we get for a prediction using this model up here. Now I could punch this into a calculator, but I like to use the coefficients from the output right there, and that way I don't end up with any rounding error. Okay, so I'm going to say, in this cell I say equal, and then I grab the intercept plus the slope for incline times the incline value that I want to predict at plus this coefficient for speed times the speed uh, value that I want to predict at and that's in H34 which I'll just type. There we go. There's my point prediction. Um, technically my pulse rate was only measured to the nearest whole number, so why don't we get rid of that extra decimal place there. That's a point prediction. What if I wanted to make another prediction? Let's um, try an incline of 5 and a speed of 5. Now technically this is a little bit of an extrapolation since the highest speed I was going before when I collected the data was 4.8. So a bit of an extrapolation. The incline is not an extrapolation even though it wasn't one of the values that I had collected in the past, uh, it's in the range from 0 to 8. So not that portion is not an extrapolation, but overall it is. It's outside a little bit of the x space, but not too bad. Okay, I'd like to copy this formula down. That doesn't seem right, but okay, so it's not right, and that's because as I copied the formula down, it was also copying my cell references down which I wanted it to do for here, but not up here. So I need to lock in the cell references, I25. Click next to the I in the I25 up here, hit the F4 key. Next to the I26, hit the F4 key, and the I27, hit the F4 key. Now those cell references are locked into place, and I can copy this down, and that seems much more reasonable, given I'm walking fairly, given I would be walking fast and a fairly high incline pulse rate should go up. Okay, those are point predictions. Let's also do uh, try to estimate a 95% prediction interval. The basic package of Excel does not have a routine for calculating prediction intervals. We know that if we were doing a simple regression, we could type in a formula to get a prediction interval, standard error prediction, find a margin of error, etc., and find the lower bound and upper bound of the prediction interval. That formula for simple regression doesn't work for multiple regression. 
uh, it would require matrix algebra to do in multiple regression, and that's kind of difficult to manipulate uh, in a spreadsheet. So we uh, will estimate. What I'm going to do next is uh, copy, I want a t value, and I want a standard error. Well, I'm going to call this approximate standard error of prediction. This is the part that we're approximating. And then this will be uh, my margin of error. And obviously it will be approximate to. And this will be my lower bound. And this will be my upper bound. And this will be my uh, interval width. Okay, so now uh, let's say I want an approximate 95% prediction interval, PI. Okay, so I'm ready to uh, get some numbers here. Now the t-value, if we're doing a 95% interval, we could use 2 for our t-value, but I'll get a more precise t-value even though it's kind of irrelevant here. So I type equal t-i-n-v parentheses 0.05 comma and then the degrees of freedom from my model, the degrees of freedom error from my model is 27. I'll just grab that cell I guess. There we go. There's my t value. Let's format that to three decimal places. And uh, we're going to approximate next the standard error of prediction. So this is the complicated part of finding a prediction interval in multiple regression. So I'm going to estimate it. What I know about standard errors of prediction is they're always a little bit, at a, a little bit bigger than s, the standard error, or residual standard deviation. So what I'm going to do is just inflate my s by 10%. So I'm going to multiply it by 1.1. There we go. Let's format this to three decimals. So this is s inflated by 1.1, or uh, by, by a factor of 1.1, 10% larger, because I know standard errors are always a little bit larger. Now that's an oversimplification, but that's where the approximation comes from. Okay, margin of error is the t value times the standard error of prediction. Let's format that to three decimal places. Actually, let's, yeah, that's good enough. Okay, then the lower bound equals the point prediction minus the margin of error. And it gives me way too many decimal places. We'll clean that up, though. Then the upper bound is the point prediction plus the margin of error. And the interval width is the upper bound minus the lower bound. Okay, let's format these numbers. Let's get rid of all the decimal places since we know this is an approximation anyway. And I'll format this, and that looks much better. So here's what we have for this row anyway. Uh, given that I'm going to walk at an incline of 4 and a speed of 4.2, I predict my pulse rate would be 130 after that treatment combination, but there's a 95% probability it will actually be between somewhere be between 119 and 140. That interval width is 21. Okay, I can also do, uh, let's see what our prediction interval for this would be. Now, I know that this is a slight extrapolation. It's a bit farther uh, from the center of the x space, so technically the standard error of prediction should be bigger, but we're not, we can't estimate much more accurately, so we're, I'm just going to leave this as the standard error of prediction. Uh, let's lock in cell I21 here with the F4 key, and lock in I15 here, and now I can copy all of this down. And there's my new point prediction, and there's my new prediction interval. But notice the standard error of prediction is the same, even though technically it should be a little bit larger. Okay, that's it for point predictions and estimating prediction intervals in a multiple regression context. If you wanted to be more precise with your prediction interval, 
You could use a more sophisticated software package like R or SAS or Minitab. Well, in uh, video four, I'll show you how to make residual plots in a multiple regression context.